everyone welcome to my full witchy room tour i already did a video that was kind of like a witchy room makeover where i took this room and completely renovated it like from top to bottom but i didn't actually give you guys a tour of like all the nooks and crannies, the things that are inside the drawers, what I use things for, where I got them. So we're gonna kind of be doing that today. I'm gonna show you some of my altars. I'm gonna show you some of my current spell work. There's just gonna be a lot going into this video. So I kind of have a feeling this is gonna be a long one. And that's primarily because I really enjoy being thorough. So <laughs> grab a beverage. If long form content is not your vibe, you probably won't enjoy this video because we're gonna go through everything today. Today. I mean literally everything so I'm excited to kind of share it all with you if you're noticing that my voice sounds kind of weird today I am a little bit sick so I apologize if my voice is weird I'm still a little bit congested unfortunately but hopefully you can listen to me okay I'm gonna have this divided kind of into sections I suppose so I can put timestamps on this video so I think I'm gonna start with my workspace and then we'll kind of work up to amulets talismans and crystals those are my books up top. I'm not really going to be going into books in this video though because I did do a whole occult uh, library tour so I'll link that video down below as well. So if you're looking for more books specifically go check out that video because there's it, this would be a ridiculously long video if I went through all my books as well. <laughs> so I'll have those two sections and then we'll kind of make our way over to this area which is I would call this altars. So this is going to be the altar area. I've got a couple altars that I'll show you and then we'll move on to storage which is some extra witchy items that I always have on hand that I'm using quite frequently in my witchy room but I just like to have it stored away so that it's neat and tidy. I like a neat and tidy room as well it doesn't look like that because I'm also very much a maximalist but anyways <laughs> let's start with the witchy workspace. Actually before we get into the witchy workspace I have to show you on the front door on the door into this witchy room I have these witch bells that my coven mate made for me which they are gorgeous she put her time energy and love into these and she attached different symbols to it and I love witch bells for protection so I like having this little extra layer of protection just right on the door to my witchy room and then on the back side I have this pentagram that I found at the thrift store for I think like 20 cents or something like that I think it was supposed to be a Christmas decoration at some point but it's a pentagram um, with the not a pentacle because it doesn't have the circle around it but has some evergreens and some pine cones on it and I did a little blessing for this a long time ago for some prosperity and new beginnings and things like that so I like having this on the back of the door as well and it's just nice to look at you know when I'm sitting in my witchy workspace and then moving over to the workspace I have this teeny tiny little dollhouse that sits here and this is where one of my servitors uh, lives I won't show you in the dollhouse because it's kind of messy right now and I have another dollhouse that I'm it's deconstructed right now so I need to build it but it's going to be right here next to it so I'll have two dollhouses for both of my servitors and then I'll move some of the furniture in here over to the other dollhouse but I kind of like having this magical little dollhouse where one of my servitors lives just right next to my workspace. It's kind of cute. And usually I keep this desk pretty open so I can sit down and do tarot readings or do a working or whatever. But I actually currently have a working on the desk right now that's gonna take me a couple weeks to complete. So I thought I'd show that to you. You know, it's already going, so why not? So I'm not really gonna share the specific intention behind this spell, although you can probably guess from some of the correspondences, but I have my intention carved into the candle and it's sitting on a bed of 
salt mixed with, I put a little bit of red and pink glitter in there. I hope you can see that okay. But what I do is every day I come into my witchy room and I light the candle. And then I started working with my prayer beads again. I haven't worked with them in a really long time. I worked with them a lot when I was practicing Buddhism actively. So I just, I don't know, I felt kind of called to work with them again. And I mentioned this on my Instagram actually. So whoever follows me on Instagram, you've already seen this part. But with mala beads, um, traditional mala beads have 108 beads on them. And so what you do, you start with the, the big one. And I'm gonna try to do this right-handed even though I'm actually left-handed. So this is gonna be kind of clumsy but you have your mantra or you have a intention that you're going to say whichever one works best for you and you say it 108 times you go bead by bead saying your intention or your mantra and you work through the entire necklace until you get back to the main bead and it kind of helps you slip into an altered state of consciousness too because it's so repetitive that you get to this point where you're almost thinking about nothingness you're just saying the words over and over again I love chanting and spell work for this reason because it gives your brain something to do so you're not busy thinking about something else but in giving your brain something to do it actually helps you achieve this state of nothingness rather than being distracted by random thoughts floating in so I like chanting and then I just work through the entire necklace and when I'm done, I'll either continue and do like a short meditation or I will go over to my journal or my book of shadows and I will write down everything I saw or anything that came up for me, any thoughts, emotions, you know, you get the point. So there's definitely a journaling session afterwards. And then I've got some oracle cards in the back that kind of help me get in the mood, I guess. And then my candle snuffer is in the back as well. It's a really pretty candle snuffer. But anyways, when I'm done, I snuff out the candle. And then the next day I do the same thing again. So I light the candle, do my 108 mantras or my 108 intentions, whatever you want to call that for yourself and then I journal or meditate let the candle burn for a little while and then I'll snuff it out when I'm done so moving on to the drawers below I have like a little skinny drawer here I'm not going to open it all the way because it's actually really messy <laughs> but in this drawer I have altar cloths and I have my magical journals and book of shadows um, I have a bunch of journals slash book of shadows in here and I did a video on the difference between a book of shadows and a grimoire but basically a book of shadows is like your personal workings, things that you're personally working on, your personal experiences practicing magic, etc. Whereas grimoires, this drawer down here has all my grimoires, is more like an educational manual. It's all of the information that you've gathered, maybe some reference sheets, like if you were studying the moon cycles or something, that would go in a grimoire versus if you were writing down how the moon cycles were actually affecting you, that you might wanna put in a book of shadows. But I know some people do a combination of both. They do an all-in-one book of shadows and grimoire. But yeah, so I did a full video on my um, grimoires, uh, so I'm not gonna be going into those, but I've got a bunch and they are all in this drawer and by the way I am not the book of shadows grimoire police whatever you want to call your magical journal is totally up to you and it's very personal now in this top drawer I have a bunch of like quick grab stuff so I'll kind of walk you through this so here I have some extra tea light candles and then I've got all of my crystals well not all my crystals but these are my tiny crystals just like quick grab ones for crystal gritting and things like that I started kind of separating them by color but then it just turned into that and whatever I just dig out whatever kind of little crystals I need when I need them and then this little category here I have my favorite tarot deck right now in this bag I love this bag so much it's so gorgeous I found it at a little witchcraft market this woman was hand making these and I thought this one was perfect for me because it's my favorite color this is a hundred thousand percent my vibe and it's so funny because I have always been drawn to this image with the antlers or the horns on the head and I just did a video about how the horn god is actually calling out to me and I bought this bag way before I even knew it was him that was calling out to me. But anyways, um, the tarot deck inside, it's just a standard Rider Waite Smith deck, but I really have been kind of wanting to go back to basics and wanting to go back to like the roots of 
practicing tarot, so I'm stuck on my Rider Waite deck for right now, but I really, really love it. And then the other deck I've been working with a lot is this uh, 40 Servants deck. I love this. It's almost like an archetypal deck. You can use it for creating servitors, but you can also use it just for working with certain archetypal energies, and I just love the artwork too. But I usually don't even like oracle cards, and this one is just, I mean, look at how cool that looks. I don't know, it just reminds me of pop culture art and being extremely innovative and just a modern take on archetypes, and I don't know, I think it's really, really beautiful. Like, look at that. Doesn't that look like a really awesome comic book or something? I don't know. Anyways, I've just been really enjoying this 40 Servants deck, so what I'll do is I'll do a tarot reading, and then I'll pull one card from the 40 Servants deck to kind of give a vibe for the reading, like a whole overarching theme, like what's the, the archetypal energy that I'm working with during this reading, that type of thing. And I do that when I need clarity specifically, because it's really nice to use in my opinion at least, to use two decks because then if you see the same messages coming through in two different decks, you can kind of say, oh, okay, well, I get it now. <laughs> I really get the message that it's trying to send. And then I also have my runes in here as well, and I actually don't really work with runes. I really want to start working with them a little bit more. I've only worked with these runes maybe a couple times. I don't know, but anyways, these are my runes, and I really want to connect with them more. I just haven't yet. I also have a couple pendulums down here as well. I don't do any pendulum work at all and in fact I really actually need to get more into pendulum work because I would like to try to connect with the entities that I'm working with a little bit better. I find that tarot is great for a really complex conversation but sometimes you do just want a yes or no answer and so that's why I really want to start working with pendulum again. I also got this herb cutter in a subscription box and I haven't used it yet. Honestly I haven't really needed to use it. It's gorgeous and everything. I mean, I really, really love it, but I haven't really needed to cut my herbs in a ceremonial way, but I suppose once it becomes summertime and springtime when I'm actually harvesting things from outside, this will definitely come in handy. And this is from the Witch's Moon box, by the way. A lot of the stuff I have in this room is from Witch's Moon because I love their subscription box so much. I've, I've had a lot of subscription boxes in my day. One thing I also got from them that I am obsessed with and I use all the time is a candle carver and look how gorgeous this is. This is the prettiest, I mean it is very very sharp on the end and you use this to obviously carve your intentions or your sigils into candles and previously I was just using like a backside of a nail clipper or a knife or something. I didn't ever actually have a specific carver like this and it is so handy. It's so nice to do candle magic now. I never realized I needed this until I got it and now I can't live without it so I definitely use this all the time. And then moving on beyond that I have some utility things like lighters and clippers and tape and things like that. I've got some scissors and tape. Oh, I have these tarot card holders and they're so pretty. I have a bunch like this, but here's just two examples. I really love these. You just put one card or two cards or however many fits in there up and you can actually see that with the spell that I'm working on currently that I just showed you. The oracle cards are held up by these little tarot card holders and I think I just got these off Amazon, but they're really handy for setting up an altar and then you can have this beautiful artwork standing up, so it's nice to have. And then we move on to this little space right here right next to my desk and it is a bunch of tarot cards and oracle cards. These two secret chests in the corner are just for my um, extra storage for oracle and tarot cards that I have because I have quite a bit and the lighting is really making it weird and making it look super dark but then I also have some sticks that I don't know what to do with yet but they're so cool. Let me show you this stick because you have to see what I found. Does that not look like a face to you? because it totally looks like a face to me. And I thought that this stick was so cool because it has a couple knots like that. Here's the other face, although this one isn't as prominent as the other one, but I just thought this was a really cool stick and I wanted to keep it because of that super sweet face, so I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with it yet. Okay, moving on to the rest of my workspace and what is on this desk. So on the edge here, we have my cauldron, and you know what? Let's get some incense going. I don't have any incense going right now, so let's do that.
Okay, I'm too lazy to go get my incense burner, so we are doing a makeshift incense burner right now and just using my cauldron and the handle. So anyways, the next thing that is here is a bunch of protection crystals. I usually change out this bowl with the seasons, but for a while I've had these black protection crystals in here. I don't know, they just feel nice. They just feel nice to be in that bowl next to my workspace. Just as a, an added layer of protection, I suppose. And I got this bowl, I think I got it from Michael's. It was like on a Halloween clearance or something like that. But the Michaels Craft Store, they always have like the best Halloween decorations. So definitely get all your stuff on clearance from Michaels if you have a Michaels in your area at least. And the way that I work with crystals now, I kind of need to vent about that for a second because I don't really look so much into the metaphysical properties anymore. I've worked with crystals for a long time and I used to work with them pretty heavily in my practice. But nowadays, I really just kind of work with them and see how they make me personally feel because I find that my experience tends to be unique from the average metaphysical description of the crystal and I think we're all just a little bit different in that way. And nowadays I'm more likely to either use crystals in a meditation or just for aesthetic purposes. I don't really do a ton of crystal gridding anymore and I don't really incorporate a ton of crystals into my spell work anymore. I don't know why because I used to do that a lot. I just, I don't know, I think they're beautiful and I just kind of like having them around because they're gorgeous and they can help me reach altered states of consciousness. So this one is probably one of my favorites. This is a Lemurian quartz and I don't know what it is about Lemurian quartz because I have so many different types of quartz crystals but Lemurian specifically there's something about it I'm telling you. <laughs> it makes me feel so connected to my spiritual self. I feel so creative. It really just helps me have divine inspiration. So I don't know. I honestly can't even remember what Lemurian quartz is for, but that's how it makes me feel. It just, it feels really good to me. So I like having it around. And then over here, this is my double terminated amethyst one. I got this from my coven mate and I love this thing. This is what I use when I'm doing like a really formal ceremony and I'm wanting to cast sacred space because I don't really do that often. But when I do cast sacred space, I love using double terminated wands and specifically this one because I've bonded to it. It feels just really good to me. I love amethyst. So this is a tool that I definitely use anytime I'm deciding to get a little bit more ceremonial with my practice. Also, I apologize if the camera's getting a little shaky. I have to go one-handed with these <laughs> angles, but um, this is my talisman for enhancing my psychic abilities. If you saw my amulets and talismans video, you definitely saw this because I created it for enhancing my psychic abilities. And then this back here is an incense cone burner. I got this from the Witch's Moon subscription box as well. It's gorgeous. You just put a little cone in there, you put this on top, and then the smoke billows out these holes. And then I have random rocks spread all around my altar space. This was gifted to me by a friend and they found it somewhere. I still to this day don't know what this is, but it's really cool. It reminds me of fairies. I don't know why, it just feels very fae like I don't know, so I really like it. I think it's beautiful. This is a beautiful tree spirit statue that I got from the Witch's Moon box as well. I love this thing. I think at some point I'm going to connect it to one of the trees that grows in my backyard and give this as an offering. Um, that way I can work with that tree spirit a little bit better. I just haven't really gotten super deep into tree spirits yet. I work a lot with plant spirits, but this year I definitely want to dive even deeper with some tree magic. That's just something I haven't really had the time to do yet. And this is my little tree goddess statue. It's a tea light holder. I've seen her for sale at a bunch of different metaphysics physical places. So I think most local metaphysical shops, at least in the United States, have this little green goddess. I've seen her in a lot of places. And then this is a large hunk of Jasper back here that I got at a thrift store for like a dollar. So that was pretty cool. Got a palm hand here that has all of the information on it for palm reading. Uh, one of my coven mates is a professional palm reader. And let me tell you, it is way more complicated than you think it is. It is so much more intricate than I ever <laughs> realized. There is a lot more than just the lines that you're going into. You're looking at the mounds, you're looking at the shape of the hand, the texture of the hand, how flexible it is. There's a lot of stuff that goes into palmistry. And then moving over to these jars, these are my writing utensils. 
So I have like gel pens in this one, like a silver and a gold gel pen. Um, and then I have just regular erasable pens in here, like blue, black ink. And then the left one is for colored Sharpies. So when I'm wanting to do some art magic and you really use the biopsychology of color to write my intentions on paper, I'll grab like a green Sharpie for this intention or a purple Sharpie or whatever. So those are my writing utensils. And then if you have seen these in the background, all of these herb prints, I'm not really sure what else to call them, but I got these from the Witch's Moon box as well. And I have so many of them now, but yeah, I definitely recommend getting the Witch's Moon box. Obviously you guys are probably sick of me talking about them, but they're amazing. And the artwork that they put in their boxes is just so cool. And this is my crystal grid. This is the Metatron cube. So when I am doing crystal gridding, this is what I typically use. And then moving to the other side, I have this little visualization board art piece, I don't know, stand-up thing. I got it from Michael's on clearance, of course, after their Halloween sale. And then this is my, I have two mortar and pestles. One of them is in storage and it's one of my larger ones. This is my itty bitty one that I just use for some quick magic when I want a couple herbs, but I love this thing. Then I have my crystal ball for scrying and my favorite hagstone, which I think I showed this to you guys on one of my videos already, but I love going to the beach and I love finding hagstone Stones, and this one is my favorite find for sure because it is just massive and then I have another crystal ball here not meant for scrying I just really thought that this was a beautiful stone it reminds me of snakes or jaguars because of the print on it honestly I forgot the name of this crystal right now which is so sad because I used to be so into crystals and I could tell you every single crystal by name but it's been years you guys and I don't remember everything and last but not least over here this is my oil burner I've definitely showed you this on a video but this is my favorite oil burner I've ever had because it's a mother made and crone and each face has the mother the maiden and the crone on it i don't know if you can see it i'm trying to kind of show you the difference in faces here but oil burners are great and i think i did a it was like 10 occult favorites of 2022 or something like that i think that one's the crone but anyways this is my favorite oil burner and then in this basket i have all of my beeswax candles i've got all of my incense all of my twine for binding things tying things together you know things like like that. I've got some smoke cleansing sticks in there that I've made from herbs in my garden. So it's basically just like a bunch of burnable items in that basket. Oh, and I also have a bunch of antlers scattered in between everything in case you haven't noticed there's some antlers over here as well and then I forgot to mention this white tree. This is one of my favorite things ever. So this white tree is I think from Home Goods or Hobby Lobby or some craft store. I got it on a Christmas clearance, of course, but I just really love it. And sometimes throughout the year, I'll hang ornaments off of it if I'm doing very specific spell work. And so, yeah, that kind of concludes the workspace part of it. So let's move up to amulets, talismans, crystals. I've got another altar over there. So let's do this whole section next. Starting from the left, I'm gonna come back to that because that's actually an altar. So I'm gonna put that in the altar section, but I have this little hanger right here, which has, it usually has some sort of mixture of salts or herbs in there for protection or whatever vibe I'm going for, for the season. So I usually change out what's in that basket seasonally. And then behind it, I have this herb hanger for when I'm drying herbs. I'm not using it right now though, so it stays here. But when I do use it, I usually hang it like, over my window. I hang it from the curtain rod and let the herbs dry, but it's winter time right now and all of my herbs are dead. So I won't be using that for another couple months. And then I have the energy centers here. I just love this little dangly wind chime thing. I don't even remember where I got this. This crow I got from the Witch's Moon box, of course. I feel like everything is from there. And then we get into all these other things. I've had a lot of people comment on this hanger right here. This is also something I got from Witch's Moon box. You guys, I sound so lame right now because I get my stuff from the same places. It's literally thrift stores, Michael's Clearance, Home Goods, and the Witch's Moon Box. Those are the four places that I pretty much get everything. But I have these cabinets, and these cabinets kind of hold significant 
memory and value to me because my dad built these for me when I was a child and they were actually meant to hold, each cabinet has hooks in them and they're actually meant to hold my precious moments. I don't know if anybody remembers those, but as a kid I used to collect precious moments and so these cabinets were meant to hold those. So anyways, he gave them to me recently and I decided to use them for my crystals instead. And so I have a lot of necklaces hanging that I have enchanted. The glass is probably really streaky, so I apologize for how that looks. But let's start at the top here. I'm not going to go through every single crystal because that would make this video like three hours long, but I'll point out a couple. I've got my amethyst Buddha in there and I've got my elephants and owls. Um, ooh, these are, so you might have seen this before on my other videos, but this is a stick that I found in the woods one day and I just really liked it because the grip on it is so nice. It has this little nub right here and I just, I feel like it grips perfectly in my hand. And so I use this as a grounding stick and I've done some wood burning on it. And in fact, I need to do a little bit more wood burning on it because I have it outlined as far as what I want to wood burn into it. Oh my gosh, the camera's not focusing. There we go. I've done an outline of what I want to wood burn on it, but I just haven't gotten there yet. So anyways, I just use this stick whenever I'm grounding myself in a ceremony, I use that. And then I have this extra piece of driftwood here because I don't know, I liked it. I picked it up and I liked it. I don't know what I'm gonna use it for, but it's staying there for now. And then moving down here, some of these are rocks that I've actually found in nature, like this mahogany obsidian. And uh, my partner and I used to go rock hounding a lot and we really loved digging out our own crystals and finding our own stuff. But anyway, so I have my amulet here. Where is it? There it is. So that right there is my amulet. And then I've just got a bunch of other talismans for various intentions. Moving on to the other side. So this is my dragon statue and I've got some dragon scale oil next to it. I haven't worked with dragons yet. I haven't really done a lot as far as dragon magic goes and I'm really excited to get into that more this year. That's something that's kind of been calling to me lately is dragon magic. So I definitely plan on getting into that. And you can see more of my talismans here as well. This is the talisman that I use for ancestral communication. This is another one for protection. I've got some bracelets. Oh, this herb grinder is amazing. Seriously, a time saver. I love this thing. Let me open it up and show you. So this is what it looks like on the inside. It's literally an herb grinder. <laughs> and you throw your herbs in there and then you swish it back and forth and it grinds up your herbs real small. So I like to do this before I put the herbs in my mortar and pestle. It saves me so much time. And then some more crystals. This is one of my newest talismans. This is one for increasing my personal power. And then, oh, this is a spell jar I did like years ago and I still have it. It's for school success. I did this a long time ago and it's funny because our practices change so much over time. I don't do spell jars anymore. And in fact, I made a whole video talking about how I don't really enjoy spell jars. <laughs> so anyways, I, I still keep it though because, you know, it's there. I'm still in school. We're doing it. It's all right. So anyways, those are my crystals and amulets and talismans. There's actually one more talisman that's not pictured here, but when we get over to the altars, I'll show you that as well. And then there's a sign over here that, of course, I got from Michael's clearance. Um, I just really liked it, so I hung it here. And the artwork on this wall I got from a friend a long time ago, and I really, really love this artwork. I think it was just part of a calendar at one point, but I mean, how gorgeous is that? So I don't care. I'm gonna put it up here, especially because I used to work a lot with Ganesha, um, and so I really love that one in the center. And then this one just reminds me of the Buddha. And yeah, and then I have a little wind chime here, which I think is really, really pretty. And it's got these little goddesses and moons on the end, and then it ends with a little river rock. So I really love that. And moving on to the next wall, this is a moon phase calendar. This is actually for 2022, so I need to get a new one. But this one is from the Magic of Eye calendar. I really, really love the Magic of Eye um, journals and planners, and I decided to get their um, calendar this last year, and it's really beautiful. And then I have, these are fake, by the way. <laughs> There's no way that they would get enough light in this area, to be real. But I got these little baskets, and then also the hook. You can't really see it, but it's hand painted. I got this from a friend who went over to, oh my gosh, 
I don't, I can't remember, it was so long ago that she gave this to me, somewhere in Africa, and I can't remember which country she went to, but they were hand painted, and she got those for me, and I thought that that was really cool. And then above my window, I have a little sign here, which I think is adorable black forest witch apothecary shop yep absolutely some window decals and then the window itself i'm on the second story right now and it overlooks um our garden and uh it's dead winter right now so it's really ugly there's nothing growing but that is a uh, part of the garden i would say that's at least the fruits and vegetables but we have a whole nother big garden bed right here that you can't really see so there's a ton of gardening that we do when the time comes got some cute little signs on the windowsill if you can see that okay my jar of moon water that is currently empty some propagation station situations I don't know what else to call it but it's usually where I put leaves in that I want to propagate another little cute sign right here please ignore how dusty and dirty my windowsill is <laughs> and then this is a mass cane plant so this is my guardian ward for this room actually I really really love this plant unfortunately we had a massive heat wave this last year and it didn't really tolerate the heat wave very well so it's still recovering like you can see it's stressed out it's been stressed out since summertime which is really sad because I love this plant and I think it's beautiful and it's recovering it is it does have new growth which is really good and happy but um, unfortunately it's just never going to be as big and beautiful as it was before the heat wave hit it well maybe someday but they grow pretty slow at least here because we don't get a lot of direct light even though this is in front of a window we are surrounded by trees this whole house is surrounded by trees as you can see out there we've got just a ton of trees and so there isn't a lot of light that comes in through here so anyways it's a mass can plant for anybody interested oh and quick update as we are talking my working is opening up like a little flower look at that I love watching the way a candle burns look at that opening up like a new budding flower like a rose I don't know I just thought it was really pretty okay now we are moving on to the section of altars I think yeah that's what we're gonna do next because again I'm not really gonna go over the books because I already have a video going over all those witchy books but starting over here this is another piece that my friend got for me when they were traveling um, just gorgeous I think this one is from Ghana and then I have a little protection charm back here as well another witch bell just like to add some extra layers of protection and then i got this little skeleton on a halloween clearance again of course <laughs> and then up here i have a couple art prints so this one it's going to kind of reflect a little bit so i apologize for the reflection but um, this one is the strength card and i really loved this piece of art because my power animal is a black panther and i really really loved that the strength card instead of it typically being a lion or something this one actually showed a black panther and i was like oh i have to get it that is so me and then i got this piece i've had a lot of people comment about this actually this um this thing that i have the ivy woven in and out of i got it at a it wasn't a garage sale it was a thrift store but it was almost like a dumpster dive thrift store not a regular thrift store it was one of those places where you literally have the bins that you go and dive through like you got to come with gloves you got to wear gloves and you got to go sift through all the bins and it was sitting at the bottom of a bin and it was actually white originally and I got it for free because it was so banged up that nobody cared if I took it so I got it for free and then I painted it so I painted it this bronze color and I kind of distressed it with some black because I didn't really care for the white but yeah I distressed it a little bit and then I painted the inside of it black and then I took some ivy and wove it in through there so that is where I got that and I think it turned out really pretty and then on the other side, I have another tarot art print to go with my strength card. This one is the Magician. And I actually really love the High Priestess over the Magician. I do love the energy of the Magician, don't get me wrong. But if I had to choose between the two, I'd definitely pick the High Priestess. But the creator did not have one for the High Priestess. So I chose the Magician instead. But that's okay because it's still gorgeous. I love the picture of the woman on here. You don't normally see that for the Magician. Usually the magician is a male figure, so I kind of liked seeing that a little bit. She reminded myself of me a little bit. 
you know, being a chaos magician and, and feeling a little bit more masculine inside, being a feminine presenting individual with more masculine energies. Okay, let's move down to this level next. I got this statue here from Home Goods, and I really, really love these hands. These are actually from India, and they are just gorgeous. I don't know if these are hand painted or not, and honestly, I don't even care. I just think that they're really, really pretty, but these are the meditation hands, and then I've got some clear quartz right in the center there. My pink salt lamp, of course. Tons of skulls. I have skulls everywhere in this room. And then this is kind of a crystal station. I don't know. I just kind of liked the vibe of all of these crystals together. This is more for aesthetics than utility. Um, these are just some little statues that I've got from subscription boxes over the years. And I really love this crystal because check it out. There's a wolf and a tree on top. And I think that's so pretty. And then moving beyond that, it's kind of dark so you can't really see it back there. But that is my liquid luck. That is my lucky oil that I have made over and over because it's probably the most potent oil that I've ever personally made. I talked about that in my magical oils video. Then I've got another palm here because it's gorgeous and why not? And then I've also gotten a lot of comments on this candelabra. This is something that I just got from Home Goods on clearance. <laughs> I mean, I wish I could say that I made this, but honestly, I am not that talented. I'm sure somebody could probably make something like this. It doesn't look hard to make. It just has these little discs and then a bunch of sticks glued and nailed together, but I thought it was really, really cool. Home Goods has like the witchiest stuff and they don't even realize that they have witchy stuff. It's actually pretty neat. So I think I got it for like $10 or something like that. And then over here, all of these are boxes. So this is my um, oil bottles and spray bottles, empty ones, of course, that if I wanna make an oil or a spray or whatever, I've got a bunch of smaller jars in here. All of my glitter is in here because this thing opens as well for extra storage. So this is basically just bottles, spray jars, and glitter storage, empty jars and things like that. Okay, so this is my brand new altar for the Horn God. I just did a video talking about how I'm kind of saying goodbye to Medusa and starting to work with the Horn God, still keeping those lines of communication open with Medusa, of course, if she wants to come back, but I did a whole video talking about that. So this is the altar that I have set up currently. I'm sure this will change a million times because I haven't really worked with him that long yet, but I have my communication candle over here that I'm burning every time I want to talk to him, work with him, etc. This is going to be lit. I have my altar bowl here and this is something that I will put probably sun water in. With Medusa I did regular offerings of moon water but I'm feeling like the horn god really needs sun water or maybe I'll put in some wine or whiskey or something every now and then if I'm feeling fancy. And then back here I kind of wanted to show you, hopefully I can get the camera to focus okay, I think it's just focusing on the antlers, so I might have to move those. There we go. So I have this talisman that was just made for me. I talked about this um, as well in my video where I talked about working with the horn god, but this talisman was made for me by one of my channel members, and she put antlers on it, which I'm so excited. It's so beautiful. But anyways, it's just kind of sitting in this space charging, and I've got some statues here for the horn god, because he's also, he has many, many different faces, so many different faces. And these statues, I don't particularly love them. Like, I, I just got them in subscription boxes, and it's more geared towards the green man. And a green man and the green man can be considered a face of the horned god, but that's not really how I see the horn god. The horn god to me is very, it's antlers. There are horns on the top of his head. So I don't really care for these statues because they don't have the horns, but I mean, they work for now. I'm just using these because I had all this stuff already on hand. So eventually I would like to get a statue that has um, actual horns on the top of the god's head. But anyways, it works great for now. And then back behind the antlers, I don't know if you can see this or not, but I have a little in incense cone burner. It's a tree and when you burn the incense it comes out of its mouth. It looks really cool. And then of course I have my stag skull head which is just 
amazing and I love it so much and I've been talking about this a lot in my recent videos so I won't bore you with that information. Uh, I have a piece of crystal here, just clear quartz that's holding this fake fern of course. I wanted it to feel like a forest, you know, like the green man. The, the horn god for me is this man with antlers on the top of his head coming out of the trees. Like that's how I see him. So I really wanted to kind of represent that with the stag and the ferns, you know, I don't know. I'd like to add some moss at some point too. I think that would be really nice. And then I also, I have some oils over here that I plan to use when working with the horn god as well to either anoint myself or anoint the candle. I haven't personally made an oil yet for the horn god. Usually I have an oil specifically dedicated to a deity, but right now I'm just using these pre-made oils and it's, they don't really match the intention. I'm really just kind of going off smell because I want something to smell woodsy, spicy, masculine, you know, those are the kind of the notes that I'm looking for. And these two oils out of all the oils I have are probably the closest to that scent. So I'm really just kind of going off scent right now until I make my own oil. But anyways, moving on, have my coffin bookshelf and all the things over here. So let me resituate the camera. Okay, so we're going off the tripod again, so it might be a little shaky, but up top here, I have a picture that one of my coven mates made me. Uh, it's got some constellations on it that pertain to my birth chart and uh, you can't really see the constellations but anyways and there's a statue of a raven I've always had a personal connection with ravens as well and then of course some additional skulls because you know why not I love skulls they make me happy I like this one in particular because it's got the names of the bones on it so love that skull so shelf number one this is so this coffin bookshelf was made by my partner and um, I just got it recently and I think I'm gonna redo this top shelf and have it be a specific altar because right now it just has a bunch of random stuff in it that I didn't know what I didn't know where else to put it so I have like a little cone incense burner here I have a little sign I have this beautiful I don't know what even to call it, glass alchemical jar. It's got a pentacle on it. It's really light though, so I don't know if you can see it or not, but when I'm working with herbs, like plant spirits, and I'm really wanting to connect to the spirits, sometimes I have an incubation process that I use in my spell work. I don't know how else to describe it other than an incubation process. So I will be working with one particular plant spirit, let's say, and I will be meditating with it. I will put it in this jar and just let it incubate and I'll be meditating on those energies for a couple days before I even put it in a spell. That way I can really, really connect with the spirit and bring it, in, bring it into whatever spell work I'm doing. I've done incubation processes in various different ways over the years, but that's probably the best way I can explain it. And then this jar back here, I think I've talked about in one of my videos. This is a magical powder that my coven made together on one of our retreats. And then this is an indoor fire pit. It's really cool. And I think I showed this on that 10 occult favorites of 2022 as well but you just pour some clean alcohol in there you light it on fire and it gets some big flames so I think this thing is really really cool especially if you want to do like fire scrying I found that having a bigger flame is nice because I don't like doing fire scrying with one tiny little candle flame like it just does not work for me I need a bonfire I need a lot more flames to work with and then getting down into my Medusa altar so even though I'm not actively working with Medusa anymore, I'm still going to leave her altar up for a while. But I have a Medusa head over here that I consecrated a long time ago. I've also got this Medusa hanger in the back that one of my coven mates gave to me. I feel like I'm saying that a lot, but there's like 13 of us and we give each other gifts all the time. <laughs> so anyways, um, she got that for me. And then I have my Medusa oil in the back here an offering cup where I would put specifically dark moon water in if we're going to get specific about a moon face. And then I've just got some sea correspondences because Medusa is from the sea originally. So I've got some hag stones here, rocks that I've picked up from the beach. I've got a seashell right here. I've got some shark's teeth because that really just felt like Medusa to me, the shark's teeth. But um, yeah, seashell and this hag stone is just gorgeous. 
I love this one. This is my second favorite Hagstone. So yeah, just some beachy vibes for Medusa. And down below that, I have all of my magical oils back here. You can't really see how far back this shelf goes, but it's probably like four rows of oils. I have a ton of magical oils. It's a problem. And then below that, I have all of my magical sprays. I don't have as many. I think I have like six right now but that's still quite a bit. So magical sprays, magical oils. And then moving down from there, I have my Black Panther um, power animal that has lots of chips and scrapes on it now because it has been very well loved <laughs> for a long time. But anytime I wanna work with my power animal, I am working with this statue. I've got a little Edison bulb light over here and a little candle in my pink salt, Himalayan salt, whatever it's called, I don't know, holder. This is my manifestation box. I did a video about that recently as well, just kind of putting this together. So I, I have put this together at the time of filming in the beginning of 2023, and I don't plan to open this until December of 2023. So that is manifesting, and I am going to leave that be. And then this guitar is actually my partner's guitar. We just didn't know where else to hang it in our house so it's going here for now I don't play guitar I am not that gifted up above the closet I have some extra storage for crystals and figurines and things like that I used to have a lot more up there but now I have found other places to store things because I actually have shelving which is really really nice but anyways so that's that up there just for some extra crystals and whatnot we have to finish the altar section so I have to go back to this area over here this is my ancestral altar and I I actually took down all the photos for the purpose of this video. It's just very private, you know, you know how that goes. But anyways, I just wanted to show you that um, an altar doesn't have to be on a table. It can be on a little wall shelf like this. So I have this talisman here, which has been consecrated specifically for the use of uh, communicating with my ancestors. Whoops, I'm like moving things around and making the dog bark. Anyways, uh, and then I have some crystals shaped as mountains because that has to do with my heritage as well and usually there's some seashells because my ancestors are island people and <laughs> anyways um i just i took a lot off of this altar because again it's very personal but just wanted to kind of show you that i do have an ancestor altar as well and it's up on my wall so when i'm sitting in my workspace i can just kind of sit down and look over at my ancestor altar and it's really kind of nice and then we have my store closet so I've got a big dresser in here just all full of witchy craft supplies I'm not gonna go through every single drawer because that would make this video too long but I will pull out some specific items that I think are worth showing just for you know I don't know some witchcraft inspiration I also have my meditation cushions in there and yeah there's just a lot of stuff in here so let me pull a couple items out and I will show you um, what's in these drawers so this is my ceremonial dagger or my athem um, it's just made out of selenite. Eventually I would love to get a ceremonial dagger that's particularly one made out of iron would be amazing because iron is so protective, really good for setting boundaries and cutting things out of your life. But anyways, this is just a really nice cleansing athame. So I really love it. This is the ritual knife that I use when I'm getting a lot more ceremonial, when I'm doing some sort of, you know, big, long, elaborate ritual. This is my big boy mortar and pestle. I uh, definitely recommend getting one of these because you can put so many herbs in there and it's really, really nice. Um, so definitely get yourself a big mortar and pestle. I don't know what I would do without this thing. I use it all the time. And then I have a couple bird's nests. So this is a real bird's nest that I got from a coven mate, of course. <laughs> And it's just it's so cool looking so anytime I want to do some elemental magic and I'm wanting to work with the air element I always bring out this bird's nest and I love the little tree stump thing I found this at the thrift store and you can like put stuff in it, which is so cool But I thought it was a really neat holding Carrier case I guess for this bird's nest, but I've got two of these bird's nests now and ugh, it's just it's so cool I love having a real bird's nest like what I don't know I feel like I feel like I earned some witch points by having an actual bird's nest in my witchy room or something I also have this sand watch in here as well that I use for meditation so when I don't want to use my phone alarm to take me out of a med meditation what I'll do is I'll um 
set this upright like this and then just watch it as I go through my meditation. Kind of allow my eyes to glaze over a little bit as I go into that altered state of consciousness. And then when the sand runs down completely, I know that my meditation is up. So I like to use this when I really don't want to be bothered by sounds. <laughs> so I found that this has been really helpful. Yeah, and then in the rest of uh, this side of drawers, I suppose, I have lots of bottles and jars and plates and skulls and urns. Herbs. I have so many herbs in these drawers. Oh my gosh, just way too many to even count. And just like a lot of bowls and plates and things to hold other things, I suppose. Oh, lots of candles too. I have lots and lots of different types of candles in storage. Um, this is something that's really cool that I just found in the drawer. Why do I not have this out on display? I don't know. Anyways, it's a tabletop figurine with the moon phases on it. And it's got the creepy hands holding the book open, you know? So I think I'm gonna take that out right now and put it on display. I don't know where I'm gonna put it though because I don't have room. But anyways, just found this. I am in love with this bowl. I found it at an antique store and I love using it for candle magic. It just reminds me of fire. I mean, look at how cool it is. So I usually stick a candle in the center and then a couple herbs around it. But yeah, I just, I really love this bowl. I thought it was really unique. It was giving me fire vibes. So yeah. And then I have my personal poppet, of course. I've talked about her quite a bit on this channel. And yeah, the rest is just a bunch of herbs and craft supplies and things that I don't necessarily need to have out at all times. And then over here, these are all craft supplies as well and like electronics and things like that. So nothing exciting in those drawers or anything. I need to figure out where to put that because it's gorgeous. I need to make some room for it. I don't know where I'm gonna put it though, but anyways, I hope that you enjoyed this witchy room tour. This was actually really fun for me to film. So <laughs> thank you so much if you're still listening to this for sticking around and listening to me ramble once again. I know some of you are like, I don't care if you're being rambly or whatever, but I know that that also bores some people. So, you know, whatever. People will stick around if they want to stick around and that's totally fine. But anyways, thank you so much for being here. Feel free to tell me which part was the most interesting section for you or the most interesting item. I'm always curious what calls out to, um, to different types of people and that would totally make my day. So feel free to comment your favorite thing below and I hope you all have a blessed day. I'll see you soon.